Imagine you're stepping on board a once-in-a-lifetime Arctic expedition that departs to the east coast of Cape Bathurst in Canada's Northwest Territories. It's said that the location you're headed is unmatched on planet Earth. The final destination is an unbelievable location known as Smoking Hills. These red striped rocks have been burning there continuously for centuries. It has minerals there that are only found outside our planet, on Mars. Some scientists even believe that the site can be an important case study for discovering life on the red planet. On board the small cruiser ship, you head out to the deck and spot an unusual scene on the horizon. You see clouds of smoke forming close to a seaside hill. It's as if a party of hundreds of people did campfires all at the same time. But this smoke is not man-made, your guide tells you. Naturally, most people guess it's a volcano. Some people on the deck even guess that an eruption might happen anytime soon by the looks of it. Your guide laughs, laughs, explaining that this is far from the case. Volcanoes are usually found on the edge of tectonic plates. It's a rupture on the crust of the Earth that allows hot lava and gases to escape to the surface. In the Smoking Hills, the story is different. The constant smoke is caused by a natural phenomenon. But you'll learn all about it over the next few days. As strange as it may sound, these rocks didn't begin burning yesterday. According to experts, the ground on Smoking Hills has been releasing clouds of smoke for at least a couple hundred years. Non-stop. You heard it right. But experts are still unsure how long they've been burning. It could be thousands of years. Now, before you leave the ship, some instructions are in order. The expedition leader explains you're going to enter a high-risk place. So, we replace your regular hiking boots and clothes with a special suit and gas mask before stepping on site. The clouds of smoke you are now watching from a safe distance are composed of sulfuric acid. This chemical is highly toxic. You need to be careful while breathing its air. So remember to keep those masks on. Oh, and as tempting as it may look, don't touch anything with your bare hands. Legend says that the first crew to explore the Smoking Hills found it by mistake. And imagine, these people had none of the gear you're going to use. First written records on the Smoking Hills date back to the 1800s. Irish explorer Captain Robert McClure led an expedition to find the lost explorer Sir John Franklin and had disappeared for over five years. The crew took a wrong left along the way and stumbled upon these burning rocks. They also thought it was an active volcano, much like you did, but they discovered how wrong they were when they stepped on sight. McClure got curious and took a sample rock back to the boat, and the story says it burnt a hole through his mahogany desk. Remember this when you feel like taking a souvenir home with you. It might not burn a hole on your desk, but it sure will fly through your pocket or any container you try to use to take it. Now, it's day two, and you're ready to explore the location. The expedition's crew is divided into smaller boats. On your way to the shore, you notice a group of animals. They are far from the smoke, and it looks like they have themselves a mealtime. The Smoking Hills are located in the Arctic tundra, and there are rich fauna and flora nearby. Slowly, you're approaching the shore. Now you see the cliffs are made of red striped rocks that look like they've been hand-painted by someone. There's another place on Earth with similar hills, and it is located in Peru, all the way to South America. The so-called Rainbow Mountain, or Seven-Colored Mountain, is a mesmerizing natural phenomenon. They are formed by the sediment of different materials. While the smoking hills are mainly red, over in Peru, these mountains have stripes of lavender, gold, red, and even turquoise. When you finally leave the boat on the foot of the smoking hills, you begin your hike up. Stepping is difficult with your special boots. The soles are made specially to support high degree temperatures, but it sure is hard to keep your balance. Before you know it, you're as close to the burning rocks as you can get. Your first impression is to get out of there as fast as possible. Conditions for human life are harsh over there. It's inhospitable, and everything about the place says you shouldn't stay for long. 
but you are also beyond curious. You might ask yourself how these rocks keep burning for so long. The science behind it is not too complicated. The rocks you're looking at are called shales. They are a type of sedimentary rock formed by clay minerals. Your guide explains that the secret to the smoke lies on the ground. The soil is formed by sulfur and coal. When they get in contact with oxygen, they spontaneously ignite, releasing the smoke you're now seeing. The few ponds in the region have very acidic water. Scientists say that this world region is the only one to show a negative pH. It means this water is naturally corrosive, so you don't dare drink it. Make sure to bring your own water bottle when leaving the ship. You spend a few hours there, but it seems like a whole day. The suits are heavy, and breathing through a gas mask is not your idea of comfort. At the end of the day, you head back to the ship, enjoying a beautiful Arctic sunset on the way. On the morning of your third day, you're in for a nice surprise. You're not heading out again. Instead, you're going to take a trip to outer space. Metaphorically, of course. Your guide talks about the connection between the smoking hills and Mars. Looking for life on Mars has been a journey all on its own, but recently, scientists discovered the exciting presence of Jerosite on the smoking hills. And guess what? Jerosite is an abundant mineral on Mars. Experts think that this may indicate that Mars did have running water at some point in the past, since Jerosite needs groundwater to form. This huge discovery may take science many steps closer to a breakthrough. Has life really existed on other planets in the solar system? Mars has been on the map for scientific research for being the most likely planet to have developed life. The atmospheric temperature now is unbearable for above-ground life, but it was similar to Earth's at some point. The most important proof needed is to find the evidence of running water. Right now, as we speak, the Curiosity rover is out there looking for any piece of information that can hint at the existence of life on Mars, past or present. Just out of curiosity. Curiosity, the rover I mean, has been exploring the surface of Mars for over 3,566 days so far. If you do the math, it makes for 9 years and 279 days. And in case you're wondering, why are we so eager to find life on other planets? According to NASA, the research for life on other planets can help us explain a lot about our own history. Where we came from, and maybe even where we're headed. And who could have guessed that scientists could begin to find answers for that in the Arctic tundra? That's exciting, right? Now, it's day four aboard the ship, and the expedition is coming to an end. Time to head back to mainland Canada. You just visited one of the world's most inhospitable places with a lot of impressions. Now it's time to tell us what you thought about the journey and what you learned along the way. Write it all down in the comments below. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.